Okay, so we're going to look at drawing a site plan in AutoCAD using a satellite image that we're going to source. Um, well, we're going to do um, two sources. We're going to use Google Maps and Stitch Maps to source our satellite image. Um, so, firstly, though, I'm just going to make a new file in AutoCAD and make sure I'm using the right template. So, actually, do any of you remember which template you should be using if you want to be working with metric? No. ACAD ISO, exactly, like it. ACAD ISO, not ACAD. Now, ACAD can be used. It is set up to work with metric as well, but it's mostly set up for imperial measurements. So, it's better to use ACAD ISO. If you see ISO in a file name, normally it means International Standards Organisation, and you can be pretty sure it's metric. And it even tells you there, normal international metric. <laughs> yes, oh yes, exactly, yes, that's right, spot on, yeah. In Revit, of course, architecture. And there is an AutoCAD architecture as well. There's an architecture metric, which is all right, but in this case, just use ACAD ISO, it's generally fine. And so then, you can check if you're not sure that you're in metric, have a look on your scales, because you can see then if you've got metric scales, these are metric, you'll know if it's imperial because it'll have fractions instead of these ratios. So, um, or not fractions, but inches, essentially, you'll see. And you'll know they're not the same as the metric ones. Oh, of course, yeah, that's what we get. Okay, so we've got our file and we don't really need to do very much in there as yet. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about um, setting up the standards like layers and things, but we'll go and get the uh, satellite image first. So into Google and then uh, we may as well just search for our site. So uh, so then we can just go straight to maps yeah. and, uh, and there it is. So we want to get it so that it's got, of course, the whole site, but then a little bit of the surrounding streets as well. So at least all of the adjoining streets, and it's not a bad idea just to make it clear and get you know, a decent amount of those streets that you're going to show on your site plan. So that's probably a pretty good area that I've got there. Um, and also we want the satellite view. There we are. So I'll just centre that in my window. And there are various ways of capturing the screen. Uh, if you know the shortcuts, control print screen and all those that work are uh, fine. But um, the snipping tool is part of Windows and that's an easy one to use. So you can just go to the start menu, type snip and you'll find that snipping tool. Really easy to use, just click on the new button and then click and drag to just capture uh, that whole satellite image. And it's really important that you include the scale bar that you can see down in the bottom right corner there where it says 20 metres. So that's it. Now I just need to save that. So I'll go File, Save As. And I'll save it so that you can get to it um, if you want to use the same one as me. But it's still a good idea to go and uh, have a go at copying or at least uh, accessing your own. So I'll call this Site uh, Images. Do. And uh, let's say EDC, MO Design Center, um, satellite. Yep. Satellite view, uh, Google. I'm going to put because I'm going to get another one in a moment. So there's my um, Google Maps version, but now I'm going to go to Six Maps just so you can see the difference. Okay, so you can zoom just like in, uh, in uh, Google Maps, of course. You can also search for an address. Uh, it's up to you. I might have a go at doing it just by zooming this time and see if I can uh, find where we are. Let's see. It's in here somewhere. There's Emmore Road, isn't it? That's Emmore Road. That's where it, yeah, there we are.
OK, so you can see how much more detailed that is than the, uh, the Google version. No street view, though. So it's really important um, that you know to use Google Maps as well, because street view um, is uh, much easier than going and uh, walking around to find, uh, find out about different things nearby near your site when you're trying to do all that analysis. Still good to go and have a walk around. I'm sure you know, it's not that difficult for you to do that from here as well. But um, anyhow, I'm just going to do my capture the same way. So I'll use my snipping tool again. And again, just uh, copy that. And we'll change this to satellite view six maps. Uh, yes, it did. Yeah, so yeah, it's got a scale. Now I'll just make sure I got that. But yeah, bottom left corner though, not bottom right. Yeah, yeah. No, look, I should have pointed that out because yeah, it's really important. That's good. Um, yeah, make sure you get the scale bar because if we don't have that, it's really difficult to make it the size we want. But as long as we've got that scale bar, then we can size it. So that's that's critical. Okay, so back into AutoCAD now. It's going to go to my layers and make a new layer called image satellite or just sat um, sat one <coughs> so I'll bring both of them in and I'll change the color just to anything that's going to stand out one thing you'll notice I'm not picky about colors for layers I think people who have these really you know dogmatic standards for colors of layers uh, don't know AutoCAD well enough and don't understand how the program should be used because colors don't matter anymore. You can set your line weights directly for layers. The reason colors used to matter is because they were associated with the line weights. But they haven't been for over 20 years. So anyone who's telling you the layers have to be a certain color, they're wrong. You don't have to. So you can do, I don't mind, you can use whatever colors you like, whatever's easy for you to see on the screen. The reason you use colours is just so that you know if something's on a different layer. But the colours are entirely up to you, and again, colours and layer standards don't go together anymore. They haven't for quite a while. But line weights are really important. So we're going to look a lot at line weights, but again, colours, um, I'll leave that up to you. So then I'll insert our uh, first satellite image on the Insert tab just by clicking the first Attach button. Now watch out, there's another one, but you just need to make sure the first one is what you click, not this one that's got all the dots on it, that does something completely different. So it's here, the one with the paper clip, attach, and then we go to the P drive and, oh sorry, yeah, interior design, and then construction two, and satellite images, or site images, sorry, and I suppose we'll start with the Google one. All right, now, I'm gonna turn that scale option off so we don't want to specify that on the screen. We want to type in a value, so I'm just going to type almost a random value. I just don't want it to be one, because one is really small. So I'm going to type in a thousand, just so it comes in at a decent size. It's not going to be the right size, but it's um, a much easier size to work with than if it's one. Uh, I'm also going to turn off the option for insertion point, and that way I'm just going at the origin. And also make sure rotation's turned off, so in other words, they're all turned off that leave relative path and everything else should be okay. So I'll just click OK. So there it is, nice and big. And bigger is easier to work with, with these things, definitely. So I'm zooming there to find my scale bar. Now what you'll find with the scaling method I'm going to show you in a minute, that there are a few different methods you can use. So when you click on that scale tool, I'll just show you very quickly, you can select your image and then press enter and you'll then get asked for a base point. So in this case, I want to keep the bottom left corner on the origin. So I'm going to type 0, 0 as my base point. Oops. Oh, you can, if you get a third box, just type 0. That's the Z coordinate. But 0, 0 without the third one works as well. And then it'll ask you for the scale factor. Now, you can use the reference option there, but it's still a good idea to check it after you use that option. I'll explain why in a second. But here, if I click reference, 
then we can click the center line of that scour bar on the left. Don't click onto one side of it, make sure you get the center. And then I'll make sure uh, ortho is turned on here just so it goes straight. And then I'm going to go for the center of the other end. Now then it's going to ask me for the scale factor, or sorry, not scale factor, the new length. And there we can type 20,000, which is 20 meters. Enter, and it should be the right size. Right, so then I'm going to go and measure. And you can see it's basically 20 meters within the degree of tolerance, but we know that because it's a pixel-based image, we're never going to snap it back. So it is 20 metres. If that says 2013, 13 millimetres is uh, more than, you know, well within our margin of error. So it has worked. But I often like to show the more basic way of scaling, well, not more basic, but the more uh, harder in a way, but also... Um, the way that's going to show you really uh, how this is all working. Yeah. So I've just taken it back to the original size, and we're then going to go and have a look at the scale bar again and measure how long it is. Just to get a bit more understanding. So you can see there I've measured it and I've used this the you know the ruler or the measure tool up the top to do that. And I'll just do it again so that it's clear. So I'll just you can click on measure, click a point, oops, sorry, make sure we've got distance, sorry, and then click a point, and then click another point. So you can see the measurements giving me is 15,099 millimetres. So 15 metres, 99 mil. So now I'll click scale again, select my object, enter, again I'll type 0, comma 0, enter, and then instead of using the reference option, I'm going to type in 20,000. So that's the size I want it to be. And then divided by 15,099. So that's our scale factor. So it's basically 20 over 15. That's the ratio. And I think it can really help to understand that because you can apply that principle to anything, even when you're scaling on a photocopier. You can measure something and then divide that by, or divide the size you want it to be by that measurement, and you can scale anything. It works anywhere. And it helps a lot when you have to scale lots of things, because often you'll ins want to insert multiple things and have them all scaled by exactly the same amount. And that method I showed you the first time won't be as accurate, because you're getting the points by clicking, or you're getting the measurement or the distance by clicking points, and it'll be slightly different every time. So if you want an exact scale factor, that's the second way I showed you is the better way to do it. If it's just a one-off quick thing, it's fine to use the first method, because it is quicker, the first method, but sometimes just not as consistent or not as accurate. And also it doesn't apply to you know, everything. So that's the idea of a scale factor. But again, that first method basically is doing the same thing, but uh, in a slightly different way. So I'll repeat it with the six maps version. So back to the Insert tab, Attach, and I'll find six maps, Open, and this time I'm going to tick Specify on Screen for the Insertion Point, click OK, because I don't want this to go in at the origin, I want it to go up above. Oh, now what did I forget to do? It's tiny, so that means I forgot something really important. Go back, and I'll just repeat it. So I've just done Undo, and I'm going to repeat that because I forgot even though I turned on the insertion point I forgot to type in my scale so by making that a thousand if I just do the same thing you can see now how much bigger it is which of course makes it easier to see and to work with generally okay so again I'll just zoom in so I can see my scale bar and this time I'm going to use that first method to scale it again there's a good chance just to practice this, in other words, as well. So I'll select it, enter, and this time I'm going to click the corner point to make that my base point, and then type R for reference, to use the reference option, and click on one end of my scale bar, 
and then the other end, making sure you've got either polar or ortho turned on to do that. And then type in the length of your scale bar. So in this case, it's 30 metres, so 30,000. Oops. There we are. Now, it actually was pretty close to the right size anyway, but let's just check that by measuring. So I'm going to use the measure tool, and then just check that that scale bar now is exactly 30 metres long, and you can see it is. So, um, then what you want to do afterwards is line those two things up. You can see that they both had the building that we're looking at the same size, but we want those to be in the same place, and we can actually use both these images together. Um, but I might go through that next week. So I might give you some time to at least try and get that done today, and then uh, that should be enough. Yeah, yeah, just got to insert it and scale it. Shouldn't take long.